Hello students, now we move on to the second part of application of elements of art. We have already seen that elements of art refer to those building blocks that are available for a designer willing to communicate visually their ideas to others. Color, color values, forms and shapes, space, lines, textures and pattern are called the elements of art. The elements of art are the basic components of art making. It is impossible to create an interior design without using at least one of the seven elements of art. In order to be successful in interior design, a designer must be able to intelligently use the elements of art. A line is one of the seven elements of art. Lines define an enclosed space. In drawing and painting, a line represents many things such as an actual line, a person or a building. A line can be thick or thin, wavy or curved or angular, continuous or broken, dotted, dashed or a combination of any of these. Form and shape. A form is the three-dimensional feel and look of an object. A shape looks flat and two-dimensional. All objects have shape or form. Shapes and forms are both geometric. Geometric shapes such as triangles, squares, circles have no volume and are two-dimensional. Geometric forms have volume, a word that describes the weight, density and thickness of an object. Then we have texture. Texture is a general characteristic of a substance or a material. Texture exists all around us. It can be natural, invented or manufactured. It can also be simulated or made to look or feel rough, smooth, hard or soft, natural or artificial. Simulated textures such as a rough stone wall or a fluffy cloud are made to look and feel like real textures. Then we have pattern. Pattern refers to extrinsic surface enrichment and it applies to both two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects. It's created by the use of line, form, space, light and color. In interior decoration, it is well to use the word pattern rather than decorative design or ornamental design because it is opposite to plain. Surface patterns contribute liveliness and interest to a room. Many interiors lack liveliness and interest when it is plain. Patterns should be used at least on one-fourth of the total surface area. Then we have light which is equally important. Light is an utilitarian and a decorative plastic element. It has a definite emotional effect. Light is stimulating and darkness is depressing. A shiny day makes us sparkle, whereas a dark day makes us dull. Those who are so unfortunate as to occupy only the north rooms in the winter realize the gloom that results from lack of sunshine. On the other hand, light that is too brilliant exhausts us physically and it is as offensive aesthetically as loud noise is. Okay. Can you give me some examples of texture? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like to answer this question. Few examples are soft, shiny, glossy, uh, mosaic and so on. Okay. Of course. Can you think of any more? Would you like to add to it? Sandy texture and um, hard soft even those can be called as textures light colored uh, we can use different types of materials in order to achieve the textures yes that gives the texture like depending on the material used you get the texture yes. okay then we move on to texture now the word texture comes from a latin word meaning to weave it refers to the qualities that are perceptible through the sense of touch that is what you can feel by or perceiving the tactile quality of an object. When the word texture is mentioned one thinks of touching something 
but texture is visual as well as tactile because we associate past sensations when we look at objects that are smooth and rough, hard or soft. It refers to the surface quality of objects, the quality that not only can be seen and touched but also be sensed through memory. For example, the roughness of sandstone, the softness of a deep pile rug, the smoothness of glass and the shininess of glowing leaves all produce a peculiar sensation because of our previous association with these textures. There are three dimensions of texture that is the tactile quality of surface, the tactile quality of manipulated three dimensional substance and the visual quality of surface and substance. What are the aspects of texture? One, surface contour is the deviation from smooth. The greater the deviation, the more visually textured. The more textured a surface is, the larger the object appears as it is perceived as a tiny pattern. Now coarse texture enlarges more than a fine one and can hide seams. Surface fiction is the resistance of slipping or slide. Wet looking, scratchy, clammy, sticky, rough, unbreathing. Thermal character or how surface feels to the touch elicits certain physical reactions and evokes psychological perceptions. Rough surfaces not only look warm, they evoke warmth. Shiny polished surfaces not only look cool, but they also evoke a kind of coolness. And refers to the tactile qualities of a manipulated three-dimensional substance. Flexibility, supple or rigid. Ability to drape softly or retain a shape. Compressibility is to response to crumpling. Ability to bend and fold. Extensibility, that is the ability to stretch and conform. Resilience, that is the ability to spring back or resist wrinkling. Density, weight per volume. Described as thick, thin, coarse, fine and porous. It ranges from fine to coarse, structurally open to compact and measured in thickness, thin or bulky or thick like that. Every material used in an interior has got texture. Textures are an element of art that is valuable in giving character and beauty to objects, interiors, buildings and landscape gardening. Architects make good use of textural qualities of building materials. Landscape architects employ texture as a valuable tool. Repetition of dominant plant textures unifies a plan, whereas contrast of textures at corners and focal points gives emphasis. Modern use of texture is creative. Rooms are now composed in which areas of various textures on walls, floors and furnishings are organized to produce rich and subtle effects. The texture of any single article is not considered separately but as a contribution to the total effect of the room. Okay. Now we move on to the application of this texture. Basically textures fall into the following categories. Soft or hard, smooth or rough and shiny or dull. These are the categories. Throughout the history, smooth, highly polished surfaces, lustrous metals and fabrics of satin, silk and fine linen have been symbolic of wealth and high status. Whereas rough handwoven fabrics have characterized lower economic classes. Smooth and shiny surfaces have been reserved for formal interiors, whereas dull and rough texture has been associated with informal treatments. Texture gives character and beauty to the objects in interior, building and landscape gardening. Combination of textures like wood, glass, fabric, metal, cork, leather, brick and brocade can contribute to pleasant interior or make it harsh or rough. Beauty. Texture adds visual interest to the environment. Texture of a surface reflects a particular character and unique beauty that makes a lasting physical or psychological impression. 
light reflector, smooth shiny surfaces such as glass, mirrors, satin, porcelain and highly polished wood reflect more light than rough and dull structures such as brick or concrete or stone and coarse wood. Now maintenance, smooth texture may show fingerprints, shiny texture may scratch easily, rough texture may collect dirt in the surfaces. A shiny glossy paint highlights the imperfections in the wall. Acoustics, texture can absorb or reflect sound. Smooth and hard surfaces tend to magnify the sound. Soft and rough texture has a tendency to absorb sound. Now consistency between articles and texture is very important. For example, coarse texture and daintly colors are not consistent. Fine textures and pastel tints are harmonious, that is they go together. Now texture can also alter colors. How is that? A rough texture or surface makes color appear darker as it absorbs light. Smooth texture or surface with shine reflects more light and so it seems paler. Therefore combination between texture is important. Rough and medium, smooth and medium, medium and rough. Smooth textures like polished wood, satin curtains, finely polished floor, mirror, plain glass, all these are included. Medium texture like medium polished wood, ordinary curtains and rough structure includes cane furniture, coarser texture, tapestry etc. Pile fabrics like velvet or cordery both reflect and absorb light. Rough textures express crudity while smooth textures express refinement. Hard textures are masculine and soft textures are considered to be feminine. Okay? Now moving on to the effects of these texture. Texture affects us in different ways. To start with, it affects physically in everything we touch. If cores are harsh, irritating, sleek or shiny, slippery and cold, the most liked is not very rough or not very smooth. Affects light reflection, hence appearance of any room is affected like the smooth materials and polished metal like satin reflect light brilliantly. They attract attention, make color look clean and strong. Moderately rough surfaces like pottery absorb light evenly. Hence, color looks less brighter and darker. Very rough surface when combined with medium structure set vigorous patterns of light and dark. Factor in household maintenance, that is also an important factor. Smooth, shiny material, easy to clean. Brightly polished material shows any foreign matter on it. Rough surface like brick and rugs are harder to clean. Less attention to foreign matter. Texture is the source of beauty and individuality. When rooms are small and have few windows, smoother textures should be used. Larger rooms with more windows and open spaces can utilize the rough structure or the rough textures with more grace. Texture adds much to the visual interest of the environment and has been important in the dwellings of all people. Cave dwellers enjoyed the feel of animal skins under their feet. The early Greeks delighted in the smoothness and beauty of mosaic floors. Persians were proud to have their hand knotted rugs and the Japanese enjoy the freshness of grass mats. Modern interiors particularly depend on texture for variety and interest. In traditional interiors, the surface of wood materials is usually modified by sanding, staining and polishing. The dominant texture of a room is largely established by architectural background. For example, a room panelled in fine grained and polished wood will require furniture woods and fabrics with a smoother texture than that which a room panelled with natural coarse grained wood or constructed of masonry will require. Now after the effects of texture we move on to the use of pattern. Pattern refers to extrinsic surface enrichment and applies to both two dimensional and three dimensional objects. 
It's created by the use of line, form, space, light and color. In interior decoration, it is well to use the word pattern rather than decorative design or ornamental design because it is opposite to plain. That is what we have discussed in the introduction to pattern. Surface patterns contribute liveliness and interest to our room and many interiors lack liveliness and interest when it is plain. Pattern should be used at least on one fourth of the total surface area. If walls and floor are plain, then draperies and two thirds of upholstery fabrics may be patterned. Pattern is the planned repetition of a motif. The repetition of form, shape and outline is a necessary component of pattern. Pattern can be the result of structure. It's of two types. One, the integral pattern. It depends on structural process. It is also called structural pattern. It's produced from the essential character of a material, the manner in which the material is employed, as well as its shape and finish. The sources of integral patterns are both natural, also called as fortuitous, that is by chance pattern is created, for example, on marble and wood, natural designs created and man-made is called a factious which means by external effort the design is created that is woven fabrics walls or floors of stone brick or wood make patterns as a result of the manner in which the materials are laid down wood laid in squares makes a repeating pattern called packet example weaving processes of many fabrics like damask brocade ringam Pochampalli, etc., create a particular pattern. Surface pattern. It is applied to a finished woven material for decorative effect or embellishment. Hence, it is called applied pattern. Surface patterns derive both from sources such as nature in abstract shapes called motifs are repeated at regular intervals along the surface. These can be applied by hand or by machines. The size of the motifs can vary because their size doesn't affect the actual structure of the material. Fabric and wallpaper are the most common materials to receive surface patterning by printing. Now we move on to the psychological effects of elements of art. We have discussed the effects of texture. We also discussed the psychological effects of texture. In general, a rough texture looks warm and natural, while smooth texture appears cold and formal. That's the basic. Now, texture has visual weight too. Smooth, reflective surfaces tend to appear lighter than rough, matte surfaces. Polished marble cladding will appear lighter than timber paneling. Coarse textures can also make an object appear closer and reduce its scale. For example, while timber paneling could balance the appearance of a large room and make it feel cozier, paneling a small room would make it look smaller or even oppressive. Texture also affects color. Smooth, glossy surfaces look cooler than rough, opaque surfaces. So you would warm up a blue wall by applying a texture to it or cool down a red cabinet by applying a glossy varnish over it. Texture affects the maintenance of an interior. Smooth surfaces may show dirt and scuff, but they are usually easy to clean. While rough surfaces may conceal dirt, but they are much more difficult to clean. Textures can be used to add interest and character to a room. It's particularly effective in monochromatic interiors. Use it to add depth and create a visually engaging room, right? Then we move on to pattern. Pattern accents and enlarges the part where used. The larger the motif size, the more enlarging the pattern. It also extremes of pattern size emphasize extremes of object size. Directional patterns emphasize that direction. Pattern adds visual interest to plain textures that might otherwise be boring. It attracts attention away from object and can help distract viewer 
and hide some flaws. Sharply edged motifs are more emphatic and enlarging than fuzzy edged motifs, making figure ground distinction easier. Now patterns susceptible to directional figure ground reversal, spontaneous change of position or autokinetic illusions soon become distracting. Closely spaced motifs can create a crowded, pressured feeling. Widely spaced motifs may seem spotty and loosely organized. Flattened motifs suggest simplicity and casualness. Motifs suggesting depth seem more complex and sophisticated. Plant, flower, flowing or shadowy abstracts may seem feminine and light-hearted. Animal, geometric, man-made objects, not all of course, may have a masculine association. Recognizable motifs suggest specific places like gardening tools, vegetables, etc. Large motifs and spacing are vigorous and bold. Tiny motifs seem dainty. All over arrangements seem stead. Directional arrangements carry the psychological effect of their dominant direction. Ma'am, uh, I have a question. Yes. What kind of uh, textures do you use for uh, old age people and kids? Okay. See, we have seen that texture can be rough and smooth. So it will be slippery and it can cause accidents. The same is the case with the kids. They're always playful and if it is too smooth, there is every chance that they slip and fall down. So a coarse texture should be preferred for rooms which have kids and old age people. That would be a better preference, right? Now that brings us to the conclusion where we have learned that the elements of art are the basic components of art making. It's impossible to create an interior design without using at least one of the seven elements of art. And in order to be successful in interior design, a designer must be able to intelligently use all the elements of art. Any interior design can also be analyzed according to the use of elements and their effects on the people. Now, hope you all understood part two of application of elements of art. Thank you.